and uh, a bit more easier to configure out of the box as well because you're, you're basically just telling a device to send all its traps to a particular IP address. Um, here we've got the IP of this. If we told you know, an SNMP enabled printer to send all its traps to this, this machine, because of enabled the network probe, would receive all those and generate alerts uh, based on the information it was getting from any SNMP enabled device. So we enable the network probe, we close it off, we come back into this and we'll see that we have a new tab. We've got the network probe tab in there. One thing we also need to do before we can even look at um, pushing out um, agents on the network is to disable the, the local system. Um, now effectively all we're doing here is a switch. Um, we're turning off the service um, or, or we're changing the actual agent service on this machine from running as local system and unticking that you'll get prompted for the, the administrative username and password. And we just use the full domain so it's domain backslash username and then it'll prompt you for the password for it. And it'll take up to you know 30 seconds to, to actually change that service. So it's turning off from local system and enabling the service again as a full administrator. And what that gives us is uh, admin access to the network effectively so that we can start pushing stuff across. Um, so if we start from there, um, you know, we've got it as a master, we've enabled the network probe and we've enabled the, the service to be running as a domain administrator. Uh, we go into network probe and from here we can you know look at those passwords that we set up at the, the client level will be available there so we can add them into the network probe that it can use when it's trying to you know remote install uh, the agents on there. Um, so straight off the bat what we can do is just re-attempt fail as saying failed agent installs but we can tick that box there and any Windows box and any other boxes that will find it will try and install an agent on there. Um, we're still waiting on confirmation on Linux installs whether we how we do that automatically, chances are it probably wouldn't do it on a Windows network, but uh, um, the enable network installation, what that ties into is for each location you've got a network. So here we're picking up on a couple of devices, I know that's our router, that's our printer. Um, you know, if we just open that up we can uh, look at the data view that would come up for that. So again we're getting data views in here that we can export, filter, all those kind of things. Um, if we look at this here, on you know, an individual basis, we can bring up a device that the, the network probes found. And we can just hit install to try and push an agent to it. Um, so all these machines here, you know, get basic information on their, their network device, their name, just picking up on their um, ARP settings, all those kind of stuff. So we can try and push that. We can try and wake it up, you know, fire off a magic packet to it, all those kind of things. But that's really the, the kind of manual push through your 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 master machine there. If we wanted to try and just automatically push it out um, to the network, we just tick that box there. And any Windows box that, that, that appears, um, just tick that, save it, and it'll start pushing the agent out onto the network. Again, similar to Kaseya, you're using um, Sys Internals PS Exec tool to try and push out the agent. Um, so again, if you had problems before running into you know personal firewalls, uh, machines that are you know, they don't have the admin share available, all those kind of things. The things that will trip up PS Exec effectively with Casea will do exactly the same with uh, LabTech. You know, the, the, there's no way around that really. You know, if you can't actually remote administrate a machine in any shape or fashion, you, you're going to be struggling to push any device onto it. You know, Casea, LabTech, any other system is going to struggle in the same way. Um, so from there, yeah, we've got two options. We can push it out automatically to anything that's available through the network probe or we can you know, pick and choose our stuff that comes in through the network. We can have a look at it and if we want to we can you know, bring up the individual interface and then push a, an agent out to it. We also have the Active Directory um, approach to, to installation. Now we don't have a plug-in for this yet. We're working actually on a, an Active Directory tab that we can um, fit into the individual machine. So if you've got a machine that's brought online that's in a, it's a, a DC, we're, we're looking to have our own tab in there. But we can do basic stuff, you know, have a look at Active Directory using computers, just you know, tying into LDAP stuff. Um, but we're also looking to have a deploying through Active Directory um, interface, if you like. As it stands just now, you can grab from your L drive of your, your own um, lab tech server, go into the L drive and in the, the monitoring installation folder. There's options in there for just grabbing the MSI of the lab tech installer. And all you do with that MSI is just drop it into um, your, your GPO for your computers. And 
just drop it in there as an assigned application. The next reboot machines have, they will install that MSI. Um, you just give it a couple of switches. Again, if you're wanting a cheat sheet on that, we have one available. Um, we'll be available shortly through our portal and knowledge base as well. Um, but we've got uh, a cheat sheet for all the, the agent installation options, actually. So don't worry about having to come back through this webinar. We've got a, a PDF that you can just have in front of you at the time, um, just so that you've got all the options down in black and white in front of you. Right, so that's looked at the, the agent deployment options. I'd say pretty straightforward. Yeah. Similar steps to Kaseya, but you just need to know where to go. So just recapping on that, you go back to the client, you set the password in there. You get one agent on the site that is the master with a network probe enabled and is not running as local system. Once you've got that, you can go to the network, you can bring up individual machines, or you can go back to the network probe and enable an automatic push out to all the agents. So hopefully covered that. Any questions? Again, with any of this kind of stuff, you just fire it off to support at t2sl.com. Now, coming back to major Kaseya functions that you'd maybe want to, you know, marry up with a similar function within LabTech. Um, if we look first of all at you know scripting, scripting has a something that you configure, um, you know, creating your own scripts and all that kind of stuff. It would probably be very familiar to you. Um, so if we look at something you know about software if you want to roll stuff out. Now the actual creation of a script within LabTech is um, similar to Kaseya. So it's all if then else. So Again, we give it a name, we give it a description. Um, we have all their if steps in here, so you know if true, if something's installed, if a process is running, if you know, particular performance counter is running high, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot more depth to the if statements in LabTech than what you would probably get out of the box in Kaseya. Um, so what we have then is all the, the then statements and then the else statements. Now what we can do in else and the then statements, you know, if we just look at one step, what we're doing. Uh, we all were writing a script log message, we are you know, writing something to the shell, we can you know, resend audit information, reboot, play around with processes, loads of stuff. We can nest an if statement in there as well. So if we if something, you know, if something was true, then do this, and then we can you know check something, a condition again within that then statement, we can just start tearing it all up so we can have a lot of nested ideas in there. So basically you can have just one script that does a lot of jobs um, without having to then create a step two and a step three which we're familiar with within Kaseya. So a lot of stuff out of the box as a, as a function that you can run within a script. Um, within this section as well you get a lot of access to the variables within LabTech so um, very easy to you know have stuff right to the you know you don't have to go and grab a variable for somewhere and set it a lot of it is global already so if you wanted to start writing computer names to the log and their you know, MSN address and all that kind of stuff we can just drag and drop them into any part of it just cancel that off. Um, got other options in here as well so um, we have an isolated script so basically if we have two isolated scripts that we're running on a machine, they both could possibly run at one time. If we start ticking boxes in this, then one will never run when the other one is running. So we can start making sure that nothing's going to start conflicting if we have some, some kind of setup like that. This public script is not yet live, I believe. Um, I think it's being made live after the kind of full release of version 3, which is what we're on just now. Um, the the public script effectively uploads the script you've created to a, a global um, catalog held by LabTech, um, so which will be available to uh, everyone, as far as I'm aware. Um, so if you've created a script and made it public, it gets uploaded and verified at the, the LabTech end. Um, also, you'll be able to go and view that um, public script um, in their own catalog online. So they've built in the functionality of script sharing. Um, not just at you know your own users and power user level, but also at the you know all lab tech users level. As well, and importing stuff like scripts is pretty straightforward. So we're looking at you know you can import it as a SQL script. The, the LTXML expansion is probably the, the quickest way of getting stuff in. It's just an XML of scripts, things like that. We can also import directly Kaseya scripts. So if you've saved all your Kaseya scripts um, or exported the the ones that you like the best, we can import them directly as well. So the actual creation of scripts is in a similar fashion there. What we can also do 
within lab tech is you, you've got those ad hoc situations where you've got you know something to do in the system where you want to delete an application or 